Welcome, everyone. This is Freddy Caviar here. This is the first official episode of The Most Interesting People in Logistics. Our first guest is Jared Ross from eCarrierCheck.com. Uh, Jared, thanks for coming on the show today and being our first official guest. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, Paul. Definitely. Uh, so Jared and I have, uh, we've talked a few times. I've done a little bit of marketing on my Instagram page and I love the whole eCarrier Check platform. So that's actually why I got Jared here and I would like to talk more about uh, what Jared does, his whole background in logistics. Uh, Jared, if you could just sit right off the bat, tell us, how did you get into logistics? Where are you from? Give us like a background. Yeah, no, 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 great, great question. So it kind of just take you back even to my early childhood, um, just because in my opinion, I'm in this industry because of who I know. Um, you know, I started in uh, jewelry uh, when I was a teenager. Um, I went to school for gemology, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I, I became a like a graduate jeweler, graduate gemologist, things like that, and traveled around the world, her nation really for um, Tiffany and Company. And uh, one of my best friends growing up was uh, Phil Holiday and Brent Holiday. I knew them fairly well, uh, and they were the owners of Nebraska Transport. Uh, they were a fairly large regional company that kind of covered LTL from Denver to Chicago. They also had a truckload division, things like that. Um, but as I was traveling around the country, I said, you know what, I really want to get back to my roots and go back to Western Nebraska, where it's, where it's where I'm from. And Phil Holiday and Brent said, hey, you know what, I can, I can offer you like a local sales job and you can cover Western Nebraska, Western South Dakota, Eastern Wyoming. And so in 2008, uh, we moved back, uh, my wife and I moved back to start a family and get into LTL. And it was uh, kind of an interesting jump, right? Diamonds to uh, diamonds to trucking. And um, it, it was one of those things where I kind of fell in love with it. I loved the the randomness of it, the, the craziness of the day to day of, of picking up freight and moving freight. And, you know, when I started, I really didn't realize how large the industry was. I just knew that I got to move home. You know, I was watching, you know, Husker football games with my dad, you know, at this point, which was kind of a priority because he's aging. And I got to hang out with my friend and he taught me the logistics industry. And so from 2008 till uh, about 2017, that's what I did. I worked in LTL and truckload and bulk and kind of worked in different divisions within Nebraska Transport. Traveled a lot, uh, became their national account manager, uh, met a lot of amazing people out there. But in 2017, we kind of switched over uh, my priority. I had younger kids, and so I wanted to stay at home uh, instead of be that national account rep, you know, leaving Monday and coming home, you know, Thursday night late, you know, uh, I wanted to be able to, wanted to be ha hang out with my kids. So uh, in 2017, we started a freight brokerage. Um, the challenge was is we couldn't use NTC. Uh, I couldn't use the carrier that I was working for that had 250 drivers. Um, but we had to get up and going, right? And so it was one of those things where uh, we got a brokerage off the ground. It took us a little bit. There was just a couple of us to start and we got it up to six prior to me getting into e-carrier check, which was uh, kind of, I guess, why we're here, right? You said you got, you went up to six people in the freight brokerage? Yeah, so from 2017 okay. to 2020-ish, late 20s. Okay. Uh, through, through COVID, we got it up to six. Um, okay. you know, it was a, a you know nice, nice size brokerage for for six people. Um, it was still quaint. Sure. It was still you know an easy thing to manage. Uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't a room full of bodies making cold calls all day, things like that. So, okay, how did that transition look like from you being a national account manager at a trucking company to being a sales uh, person at a freight brokerage? Was it essentially the same or was it different? You know, that's a good question. You know, the transition to clients, mainly because I had a lot of relationships through the years, uh, was fairly easy, to be honest with you. we I'm a big believer in if you provide more value than anyone, uh, you can get into any client. And even though we were non-asset, um, you know, at that particular point, it, it was still just a matter of value. It was still a matter of relationships. And that's really what this industry came down to, in my opinion, and it still is. It's who provides the most value wins, right? Definitely. And then uh, you said in 2020, 
you left the brokerage industry to start working on eCareYourCheck.com. Is that correct? Yeah, so we, we've always had, um, one thing that we've always been around or wanted to expose ourselves to is technology. Um, you know, we were obviously kind of late to, you know, some of those early adopters of technology, but we've had a programmer on staff here uh, since 2019. And there were three things specifically uh, that eCarrier Check wanted to solve. Uh, there was a, there were some issues that, you know, if you got on load boards, you know, and it didn't matter which load board you were on, you know, what would happen if nobody called on a load that you had, right? Or how would you find somebody, especially somebody really specific? Maybe I wanted to find a 53 foot flatbed, or maybe I needed to find a pneumatic trailer because I was into bulk, um, or maybe I needed to find, you know, a Conestoga or, or Maxis up in the north, you know, northwest. Well, if nobody's calling on those off of load boards, what do you go next? What do you do? And the, the other issue that we had was, you know, how do you find carriers that are going to the places that you want them to go to? You know, a lot of people maybe don't go to California or they don't go to New England. Um, and so we wanted to solve that particular issue. That was probably the first issue that we said, let's make a business and let's solve this issue. And even if that issue only became internal and it stayed in the, the brokerage, hey, it allowed us to find people. And that was half the, uh, the battle when it came to finding some of the carriers we needed for our business. Sure. So uh, you, have, you, had, you had three tasks that you wanted to complete for eCarrier Check. You said you, had, you wanted to solve three, three issues. And currently at the moment, uh, how is that going? Have you been able to solve those three issues? Yeah, so the first one was carriers, right? How do you find carriers? And yes, our platform uh, uh, can find carriers really well. Um, one thing that we did instead of just tackling, well, let's call the FMCSA and get some data. What we wanted to do is really get specific. And I wanted to find, make sure that I could find a 53 foot Wabash, or I wanted to find, you know, a uh, Heil, a 19, you know, 99 Heil pneumatic trailer or things like that. And so what we did is we tackled the VIN industry and we started our data with that and said, okay, if I get into all of this data and I get a 17 digit code, what do I do with that? And how, what's it going to tell me? Right? So we went after all the major manufacturers and some of the real kind of boutique manufacturers of trucks and trailers. Uh, because I wanted to be able to identify the certain trucks as well as the trailers. Although the trailers are more important, sometimes you need to find a day cab to pull a power only for whatever maybe maybe reason. Or maybe you've got a heavy haul and you need to find some guy that's got a three axle, you know. Um, but that was our first jump into the data space. So we reached out to all those, uh, you know, major manufacturers, the boutique guys, got set up with them. We have about 90% market share. Um, some of the uh, other ones that we're continuing to work on are, are like real small manufacturers, boutique guys that are doing ag trailers that are really unique. You know, they're blowing okay. them up and stuff like that. But that was probably the first uh, way that we went about our database was let's get this. We're going to layer uh, other data on there with, with some FMCSA registration data. And then uh, from there, uh, we built uh, a machine learning algorithm essentially that layers on top of all that so that not only can we identify carriers um, in the lanes that they may be running, but we can also identify similar carriers uh, through our classifier, which is on our system. And it really allows people to, you know, if you work with one particular carrier, everyone seems to have sort of that relationship with the one guy that you're like, man, this guy's the best. He is always there. He's got Good, good equipment. Well, how do you find more people like that? Well, what our AI classifier does in this particular case is actually goes out, looks within a hundred mile radius, verifies who those, you know, those other carriers are that have similar equipment based upon the VINs, based upon geographic, uh, and, and in some cases in our system, even by the shipper. And then you can come in and say, okay, well, here's, here's who the carriers are that are similar to the guy that you like, and it allows you to find those and build those other relationships that you may not have right now. So. Okay, because I'm really fascinated by this whole VIN tracking stuff. It's like the first time I've heard that, you know, VIN numbers are being tracked. Well, the first time I'm, I'm hearing data being utilized for it, uh, I'm, I'm guessing other people are also utilizing it in other, other ways. But how do you get to, how do you buy that data? Uh, or how, like you just reach out to the manufacturers? 
Yeah, that's a good question. So um, the FMCSA obviously tracks, you know, VIN numbers as they're doing uh, inspections, right? And so as long as that 17 digit inspection is wrote down properly, uh, we can we can see that 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 number. Now, every manufacturer has kind of a different code, if you will. It's kind of like the old cereal boxes and you got to have a decoder ring. So that was probably the, the hardest or the biggest challenge or hurdle was you know, how do you decode each of these from each of these manufacturers? And that's what we did is we built a system that allows if I put in a 17 digit code, it, it'll find what type of trailer and it'll identify that. So. OK. Fascinating. And yeah. then so you you did that for the carriers. You also have some uh, stuff for, for shippers as well. Uh, do you want to build on that to, to tell us more about how the shipping data works? Yeah, absolutely. So our shipping data, we get, we have a couple different uh, resources to get uh, shipping data uh, from. We can see shippers um, and through our VIN and carrier classifier, essentially, then we can identify shippers by what type of carriers and what type of equipment they need. Um, and so if you get in there, the, the biggest issue that we had, and here's here's why we went after this particular market and, and why we're building a sales database and really trying to make it as robust as possible was, I didn't want to buy a list anymore. You know, we were buying yeah. this, um, you know, or or the sales guys, you know, those brokers were getting on Google and, you know, Googling, you know, manufacturers in, you know, Lincoln, uh, Nebraska, right? right? Or they were looking up those. And, you know, there's a variety of ways of, you know, getting leads from a shipment from the shipper to the receiver and then maybe vendors and, and things like that. There's a lot of ways to get leads, but I wanted to make it a little bit smarter. I always said to myself, you know, if I could just have four of this particular kind of customer that I was having so much success with and utilize the carrier base that I was already working in, man, can you imagine how much more efficient I would be? I already know the carriers in that space. I already know those shippers and that that product. Okay. I'm, a big, I'm a big believer. If you're going to be in a brokerage space, you need to go into a niche. Uh, my mm -hmm. niche was my niche was roofing. I knew roofing in and out. I could tell you all kinds of crazy stuff about roofing, um, <laughs> stuff that's not even necessary. You know, to be honest with you, I'd love talk, to hear some. <laughs> yeah, but I could talk the talk, you know. And I knew, yeah. I knew, I knew the backside of the the supply chain from raw bulk coming in to I knew the 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 finished product and that that goods that were going out. And I could talk both of those aspects. And so I said, well, how do I identify more shippers that are similar to this? And so through through the data that we can get um, and through our classifier, you can find more people that are using dump trucks in Houston or more people that are using reefers in Chicago or people that are working in a specific industry. You want more egg accounts so then you get on e-carrier check and you can find people that are shipping eggs. Um, and it's it's really that, that simple. It's it's it allows our it allows our system to or allows brokers and, and carriers to find people even that are similar to what they're already hauling. Uh, yeah. So if a carrier if a carrier would get into our system and put in their DOT, we're already going to have a suggested list of shippers that they should be working with. Um, and sure. for those carriers that are in a niche, the same thing. They can go into that niche, type it in. You want to type in roofing into our system or manufacturing or plastics, you know, eggs, whatever it may be, yeah. you'll find yeah. those, those shippers. So that was that was one of our big things. And then really based upon how we wrote uh, some of our, our AI or machine learning, however you want to put it, is we wanted to give you the understanding how likely it is that that shipper is to utilize a new uh, a new vendor, whether you're a new carrier or a new broker. And so our system actually will look and say, yeah, right now there's a percentage chance based upon, you know, where the shippers out of, uh, where the carriers are out of that they're hiring and how big are those carriers that they're hiring. We can identify and say, yeah, there's a likely chance that you could become a new vendor. So. Okay. So it helps carriers, helps to find carriers, helps to find shippers. I love what you did with the, also with the auto assistant, something that um, I was kind of shocked by when you first showed me, where you could essentially have an auto assistant answering uh, a phone call and giving all the details about a load. So I just say like, for example, you have a couple of people in the office, you have too much freight and you don't have enough people on the phone, you have an auto assistant that will pick up, provide all the details on a load, and then you could put input or the carrier could input at a rate into the auto assistant uh, that will be sent to, to the person. So 
that's fascinating. How did you get, how, first of all, who, who made this? this? This is your programmer that created it. And was it your idea? And is it a very, is it a popular tool? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. So, um, so the first client that we brought on as a broker was General Motors. Um, they would have tons of loads. They would send out emails to, honestly, they'd send it out to probably 20 brokers, 20 carriers. And it was just kind of this crazy chase, to be honest with you. It was a little more than I was really thinking. You know, obviously, I was trying to find something different, but this is what was presented to me. And so I, I jumped on it because mm -hmm. we were trying to, to gain some revenue. And this was prior COVID. OK, so kind of take that into consideration because uh, I almost considered our phone technology as kind of our arc reactor, like Tony Stark sort of thing. Right. But what, what happened is when I post up a load, you know, and they would have all this freight going from Michigan to Laredo. And I had two guys, it was me and this other guy. When we started, the phones would just blow up. You couldn't, it was insane, you know, and yeah. I've always been a big yeah. believer in, in statistics, right? You know, you're, if you just play the statistics game and I get 20 phone calls in 10 minutes, how do I know a, that I hired the safest guy B mm -hmm. that I got the most competitive guy and see what if actually one of my contract guys was just late to calling in you know a lot of those guys yeah. that live on the load boards and they they've got it's insane how quick they call right and this was prior to covid so what i said was well how do we develop a technology that allows you to horizontally scale sitting at your house um you know when we were building this we we built this in covid times right we were building this through covid which is kind of an interesting time to build technology um the phones really stopped you know, the, the, nobody was calling off load boards. There's still sort of some challenges, even finding people off load boards. Right. But what, what our ultimate goal was to help that guy either sitting at his house or smaller brokerages horizontally scale real quick, no different than the, the big broker CH or TQL or Landstar, something like that. And so we, we came out with this idea. Our phone tech has actually rolled through our entire site. We have a click to dial feature that, you know, if you get tired of picking up your cell phone, you know, we can just utilize the, the, the click to dial. And the way our middleware is actually built is honestly, we can hook into any system. We can hook up to your VOIP, we can hook up to your cell phone, we can hook up to Verizon, it doesn't matter. We're yeah. just controlling the calls that are coming in off of the, off, off the load boards. Uh, we're not controlling your relationships. We're not controlling anybody that knows your phone number. We're just controlling the flow of, of communication through the load board. Um, and that's, yeah. that's exactly why we built it, to be honest with you. So okay. uh, we, we would test it. We tested it internally before we launched it. And, you know, it was interesting. We, we tested a lot of it and uh, it was kind of a fun piece because, you know, if you had Sprinter van freight, these are high call, high volume lanes, really. If you had Sprinter sure. van freight or, or van freight or reefer freight out of certain areas, you knew you were going to get more calls than you could handle one or two or three people could handle. And the other thing that we wanted to do was just respect the carrier's time. You know, uh -huh. a lot of carriers, they get put on hold. They're waiting to get to the right broker. And then, you know, you have to get on the phone. Hey, we just covered that. We just covered that load. Or B, they get all these rates and then they don't call the carriers back to say, hey, we did get this covered. I'm sorry, we, you know. So this allows them not only to communicate quickly with the, with the carriers, we have a, like a text communicate, hey, we did get this load covered and it goes back to them. Uh, we have an email function, a phone function, whatever, however you want to communicate to them. But what it does is it gathers the rates. Uh, we have a fair market value indicator in there that allows you to understand where rates are at at that particular time, right? Okay. And that, that just communicates over to the carriers as they're putting in rates. Uh, we can handle Honestly, I, I've never seen it break. Um, the other night I okay. had, uh, the other night I was teaching a class and I had uh, 25 people in that class. They all called in at once. And uh, it, was a, it was an entertaining night. And, and we, um, everybody put in their DOTs and, and things like that. And they could see how it works and, and uh, the, the quickness. Was this like on a, on a demo that you had scheduled? No, I, I actually teach a class. Um, I teach a class in logistics and brokerage um, for, oh, nice. for yeah, and so it was just a it was a fun way to to show how this technology could be utilized in order to answer the phones. So. Sure. Uh, are you planning on building on that technology to where potentially the the machine could book a load? 
Yes. If you want to go there? Good. Okay. That's a good question, actually. Yeah, no, we definitely plan on uh, kind of further expanding um, on that. Like I said, right now, it's our arc welder or arc reactor, right? Um, you know, it's it's sitting there, it's being used. Um, in fact, last month, there was about uh, 7,000 phone calls that were answered um, on our system, uh, which is kind of neat. Okay. Um, as yeah, it's people, amazing. As people continue to start to get back into logistics or, or Maybe not even that, but as capacity starts to come back to the other swing, right? Which I don't know when that'll be. Maybe Q2, Q3 of next year. I don't know. Maybe maybe Q3, Q4. I don't know. But as people continue to pick up the phone, you know, we want to be there to help them digitize or make your brokerage a little more efficient uh, with with our phone technology. So, sure. And then another question on top of that is. Do you think you're going to be able to make outbound calls using this auto assistant to where if because you could look up a carrier that runs lanes in your carry truck, which I love. I absolutely love it because if you're looking for any backhaul or any carrier that runs a specific lane often that, you know, might not even be posting on DAT because they have the, their set of brokers they're already working with. It's a great platform to actually get data that might not be accessible through lane makers. And so, like, let's just say I had a load from Chicago to Laredo, and I just put in the uh, quick lookup for carriers, could I have, do you think this auto assistant eventually could be making calls to these carriers and be like, hi, this is whoever, I'm calling, you know, like a machine. Do you think that's possible? Would you ever want that to happen or no? You know, that's a good question. I, I think the, I still think there's a human element to things. Um, you know, their machines are bent to make humans' lives more efficient, right? No, exactly. that's the, the goal. Um, you know, there's still some human element that's needed in our industry. Um, 100%. You know, and so to answer that question, is that possible? Yeah, there's a possibility. Our phone technology is pretty robust. Um, you know, that's that's something that we'll have to continue to look at and see if that's uh, a sure. road we want to go down to, or if our industry is starting to demand it, you know, or, or go yeah. down that road. So. Yeah, I see it eventually being if like, if people start utilizing this and there is an outbound call, uh, option, carriers are going to be starting to get spanned by robots and carriers are going to get turned off by it. Uh, but it's an unbelievable tool when you're literally, like you said, two people in the office, phones are being, phones are blowing up. And it happens when I was managing an office, uh, we had over 20 carrier sales reps in one room. And when phones would just blow up, it, there was not enough phones for those 20 people. So it doesn't even matter if you're a small team, if, if you're a brokerage, you're at, at a given time of the day, your phones are blowing up. So it's useful for anyone. Yeah, yeah, I, it, absolutely. And that's, you know, that was our goal is how do we make your day more efficient? How do you make sure you're hiring the safest carrier at the most competitive rate? And if we can get our contract guy to utilize it or to possibly jump in and maybe they were later to the dance of calling, I'd sure rather use it, you know, with somebody, I'd rather give a shipment to a guy that we're already set up with, you know, so. Definitely, definitely. And what is your uh, goal with eCare Check? What where, do you see this developing into other services, or do you just want to build on the services they already are offering? Yeah, I think right now, you know, we're focusing on just our core elements. Um, you know, we've got some other pivots that we're that we're working on um, that that are real similar to our core elements. How do we continue to make a communication more efficient? Uh, how do we provide more value to our current clients? And, the, you know, our client mix right now is about 50-50 carriers and brokers. And so okay. we're really trying to evaluate, you know, where does value come for them um, and really listen to them, to be honest with you. So that's, you know, as far as where we're headed, you know, that's probably our biggest thing is how do we continue to provide more value uh, to our current clients? Uh, are we looking to get humongous? No. You know, to be honest with you, we're a bootstrapped company uh, that is looking to just change, change some relationships, help people find relationships, help them grow their business. That's, that's the ultimate goal. Um, and, you know, luckily, you know, we've got an awesome community already. Uh, we were able to give back this last month to a local breast cancer awareness. You know, to be honest with you, uh, at the end of the day, we're all trying to uh, at the carrier check is we're trying to change somebody's life and maybe that's us giving or that's maybe us building better technology and so that's that's our ultimate goal how do you give back i love that it's uh it's 
Great stuff. And Jared, uh, your customers right now, are they predominantly freight brokers or are they also trucking companies? Yeah, it's, it's a 50-50. We're real close to 50-50 where uh, we have a lot of carriers on our platform trying to find new shippers or brokers. We show both, to be honest with you. Um, so if, okay. if you're, you know, if you're a carrier that maybe I just don't want to use the load boards for my truck, well, why don't you call a broker that you found that's tenured, you know, maybe they're two years plus in. Um, you, can get, you can find a lot of brokers that are out there that aren't on load boards um, that are moving freight locally. Okay. So, you know, so our, our mix right now is 50, 50 carriers and brokers. It's, it's a little weighted toward brokers, but uh, for the most part, it's, it's 50, 50. Okay. And then uh, Jared, do you have any business wisdom from being, cause you are the vice president of sales at you carry check. I'm curious, this might take some thought, uh, or I'm just curious if you might have it, uh, have some business wisdom to, to share with the community you know, someone that, you know, would, would love to be in your position or the struggles that you face, something that you learned throughout the last year or two that you would like to share with people? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. You know, I'm a big believer in feeding my mind. Um, you know, immersion is so big and so key in this industry or in any industry. It doesn't matter who's listening to this. You know, it, get, take the time to just immerse yourself in the industry. Learn, get on, get on the load boards, get on the the Facebook groups and Instagram groups like yourselves. Just understand things and feed your mind. You know, that's probably the first thing. Number two, though, honestly, is just stay consistent and, and stay disciplined. You know, I think something that I've learned um, through the last, you know, decade plus in this industry is is patience is is everything. Um, and really just stay consistent. I honestly, I'm really, at the end of the day, I am not probably the, the best silver tongue salesman there is. I know I'm not, but I'm a lot more consistent than most. And, you know, and that's, that's probably my, my key to anybody is stay consistent, stay disciplined and, and feed your mind. And I think if, you know, I've always been a big believer, if I can help other people get their goals, you know, like the Zig Ziglar, you know, quote, you know, help other people get to their goals and you'll get to yours. And I've always been a big believer in that is how do you provide more value? In fact, every time we have a development meeting, I'm like, how do we provide more value? I want value. How do we get, you know, these people, the, the brokers and the carriers that we work with, how do we provide them more value? And so always think that, you know, as you're starting companies, how do I provide value? Um, or if you're in the industry, how do I continue to provide value? And honestly, I know that sounds like a lot, but value can be as simple as just communicating better. Oh, definitely. It's, you know what I mean? I 100% it's, agree with you. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just communicating better. And I think I think we struggle with communication and so, you know, I talk to a lot of owner operators. I do a lot of coaching. I do a lot of consulting with owner operators and they're like, "Well, a lot of shipping managers don't want to deal with one truck." And in my my response is usually, "Well, you just didn't provide enough value." And uh, is that correct? Maybe shipping managers don't want to deal with that one truck, but you know, what if he started a LinkedIn page, started an Instagram page, Facebook page, and every time he yeah. got a load, you know, he starts taking pictures of all of his freight, if they allow him, right? There's some of that, uh, you know, he's always communicating, hey, I'm back in your area every Thursday. I'd like an opportunity to work with you, pick up a freight bill. Uh, it's one of those things that I just, that I just think you can provide value a lot of different ways, no matter what size you are. Yeah, um, always, always try to be sure. looking to uh, punch above your weight. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, uh, I totally agree with you, and I, I, I believe that even like the smaller companies can provide more communication just because they have less customers. They're able to pay more attention closely to, uh, to customers. So I, that's what I, that's what a small company could do to com over communicate is what they could do just to to show themselves. Because like the large brokers have difficulties with that. They have too much business and they're struggling with that. So I love that. Feed your mind, stay consistent, be patient, and provide as much value as possible. Great wisdom, Jared. Uh, also, for anyone that's interested, Jared hosts free demos every Tuesday and Thursday, correct? Yep. On Zoom, where he shows you e carry check platform. I recommend everyone to sign up for it. It's free like just check this platform out uh i love it i think it's very powerful and any any freight broker since i'm a freight broker uh we'll see the potential in it but it goes through same for trucking companies uh 
And so, Jared, thank you so much for being on the show. Do you have anything else to add? No, I, I appreciate it. You know, I, I love your content. Uh, keep it coming because it makes me laugh. Sometimes uh, in this industry, you need a little bit of a laughter and, and lightness. So uh, from your yeah, side, of things, keep, keep that, keep the content coming, man. I love it. Thanks, Jared. And also everyone follow eCarrier Check on Instagram, TikTok. TikTok, uh, Jared posts videos out there that, that are very, very good uh, just to get some information. And then are you on LinkedIn? We are, I am, uh, yep, I'm on LinkedIn yeah. as well as uh, uh, Facebook, so. Perfect, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jared. And yeah, there we go. First episode is done. <laughs>